Friends, today we need to debate something that I've been struggling with since this turned up on my doorstep. When you look at a car, its design kind of sets your expectations. Like for example, you look at this and it says prudent, practical. You look at this and it says marriage, children. Then you look at this and it screams you are going to be a super double secret agent and all members of the opposite sex will lust after you simply by virtue of you driving it. Then there's this, and to me it says sport, luxury, coupe. But then I looked at this document and I got confused. So today we need to answer a question of what our expectations should be of this two-door German twin-turbo Mercedes. Okay, so today's discussion, yeah, it's about the 400 coupe. But I would argue it's more about the concept of the right number of cylinders underneath the hood of an E-Class. If you remember, the E300, plenty powerful, it's got enough power. It just doesn't deliver power the right way, at least for a mid-sized luxury car. So with that, let's put our foot into it. We now have the proper number of cylinders, or at least that's what we're trying to find out. Six cylinders, let's go around this corner here, put our foot into it, coming out. And yes, this, this is the way an E-Class should drive. It's not that it's, well, it's actually, it's pretty quick. Uh, it shouldn't just be adequate power. It shouldn't just be enough. It's the way the power is delivered. Like here, it pulls the freight train, not quite. That's reserved for the 63 or that four liter twin turbo we drove in the C63S at Circuito Ascati. But here, it's more than enough for the kind of people that would buy a car like this. Let's come around this turn again, put our foot into it. And it, you know, it downshifts faster, it delivers power faster. I mean, yeah, of course there's more power. But at the end of the day, put aside the difference in horsepower and torque numbers, it's not about that. It's about how quickly it can deliver power. It's about how much more refined this engine is over a four cylinder in a luxury sport coupe. That's what it's about. So a couple of times now I've given you the hint vice that this is a very oddly equipped E400 coupe. So without further ado, let's go to the tail of the tape. Uh, suggested retail price, $61,400. Remember, that is a 4Matic, which means it's all-wheel drive. Add to that the stunning emerald green metallic paint. You don't get it until you see it in person. Santa Maria, Madre de Dios, $720. The two-tone beige and espresso Napa leather interior, $1,370. Add to that the black piano finish on the dash with the lines, $1,300. The AMG wheels, $500. Rear airbags, $420. multi -con tour seats, $950. Make those seats heated and cooled, $450. Then while we're at it, you gotta have the Burmester, man. I mean, it kicks even with Christmas music, $5,400. Then there is a package three. It's just, it's a lot of stuff, it's a lot of tech, and it's $9,350. Uh, then there is an additional warmth and comfort package, which basically makes the armrest and the center console heated. Uh, that's $800. Then there's what's called an AMG line package. It's, it's basically, it's dress up. There's no like AMG bits underneath the car. Uh, that's $2,500. Then there's a destination delivery of $995. Now, before I tell you the retail price here, take a wild guess what's missing from that list. Give up adjustable dampers. So how does an $86,155 Mercedes-Benz Coupe drive in the canyons. Let's find out. Okay, so I don't know how to start this segment here now that we know that information. Maybe the best way is via con Dios, because you and I both know what's coming up here. So let's put our foot into it, go around some corners with one suspension setting. Um, here goes. Break, 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 break. Come around the corner. Oh my God, there is some lean. Wow, is there some lean. It's controlled. It's not a mess. It's definitely controlled, but here we go. Nice declining ladies turn, elevation change, put our foot into it some more. And interesting. There's no squat in the back, not in the outside corner, nothing. It's just 
lean to the side. Let's try this again, coming around this turn here, put our foot into it. Again, the power is beautiful coming out of this six cylinder engine. I don't even know why they offer the E300 in this country. I mean, you need the six cylinder people, you just need it. That E300, it, it didn't love the engine, but loved the sport suspension on that thing. It transformed the car. Perhaps you can tell, but I am perplexed here. I just don't understand why on God's green earth they would offer this car without the adjustable suspension. It's not a matter of cost. This is base price, a $61,000 car. You know, throw me a bone here. Let's say it's two grand. I don't think you're gonna lose sales between a 61 and a $63,000 car. I think of that as like a bonus question. Am I wrong in that area about the pricing and make, making the suspension system the standard? So if our theme today is expectations, I can't get through this episode without going back to the interior. And it's not the dashboard with all the whiz-bang apps changing the colors or even changing the graphics the way the thing presents itself. No, it's the details, like the vents or the way someone put these colors together in this very car here, or even the back seat, a place I would never want to be is a thing of beauty to behold. Almost as if the expectation should be Marlena Dietrich playing on repeat. So rather than talking about a couple of notes, I wanna share a little bit behind the scenes with you guys because I did something rather different with this car. I did not shoot the in-car either right away or halfway through my time with this car. I deliberately put it off towards the end of my visit with this car because I was so perplexed about this non-adjustable damper thing in a luxury or seemingly luxury sport coupe. And then after the reflection, it finally dawned on me. It's in the name. Notice, this is not an E43 coupe, it's an E400 coupe, which tells me they're not really looking for this to do the job of the C63 coupe, that eight cylinder, which, my God, it would be wonderful in this car, absolutely wonderful. And please, oh, please, oh, please bring it to this car. But something tells me Mercedes ain't gonna do it. I know there's this talk of these these 53 series AMGs, maybe that will make it here, but not the four liter twin turbo, because, and this is with all due respect, I think Mercedes has built the nicest Cadillac Eldorado I have ever driven. And I, believe me, I love me some Cadillac Eldorado, but there isn't a Cadillac Eldorado on offer from Cadillac, so Mercedes seems to think that there is a white space of people that are looking for a luxury coupe. Maybe not so much a GT or a Sport in their luxury coupe, but just a luxury coupe. And this is the nicest derivation of it that is on offer with no pretenses of it needs to be like full fat AMG. Yeah, one could make this into adjustable dampers. One could make this interior more sporty. And I think that's the thing. It's it's one of these cars that you can kind of bespoke out, but only to a level. So really what we have here is a case of managing expectations. I rolled into this with arguably the wrong expectations, thinking I was going to be driving an E43 coupe. Yes, the engine is magical, transforms an E-Class, any E-Class needs it. So Mercedes-Benz is the one managing their expectations, or really your expectations, by saying this was never intended to be an AMG. It ain't a sport anything. It's a luxury coupe, and you need to look at it as such. That's why we called it an E400 and not an E43. So apparently, I'm the dumbass. I would argue today was a bit of a learning experience, really in three areas. First and foremost, the E-Class absolutely positively needs the adjustable dampers. That E300 that we drove, longer wheelbase car, longer length, better dynamically to drive than this because of those adjustable dampers. Number two, absolutely positively the E-Class needs a V6 or above. This just transformed the way power is delivered and makes it it now feels like a $50,000 plus car with a six cylinder engine in it, rather than that four cylinder in the E300. An absolute must. 
And third, and judging by my neighbors, they love the design of this car almost as much as that LC500. I'm still kind of up in the air. I love the look of it. I'm still up in the air whether I like the small, medium, large theme that Mercedes is going for. Think of this as like a bonus question. Do you like the design of this car and do you like the small, medium, or large? Let me know in the comments below. But overall, the combination of the six cylinder engine and the much better looking carrying case, this, I, it, it now makes me more bullish on the E-Class. Until I see you next time, bis später.